Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Harry Potter, Dumbledore's Phoenix, Fawkes, Wand Law, and Lord Voldemort. More specifically, we're going to be addressing a couple of things. Number one, why Fawkes' Phoenix Feather chose Voldemort, and number two, why Fawkes' Phoenix Feather chose Harry. We know that Fawkes supplied the tail feather for both Harry and Voldemort's wands, and I've got a sinister theory for why. Harry first picks up his wand in Ollivander's wand shop, right near the beginning of the Philosopher's Stone while accumulating supplies for Hogwarts. A wand is the object through which a witch or wizard channels his or her magic. It is made from wood and has a magical substance at its core. Wands made by Ollivander have cores of phoenix feather, unicorn hair, or dragon heartstring, and are of varying woods, lengths, and flexibilities. As shown above, wands come in a variety of shapes, colors, sizes, flexibilities, and materials. The main parameters that differentiate each wand are as follows. Length, wood type, and lastly, core type. Each element is just as important as the last, and these numbered criteria are part of the reason why each witch wizard's wand is so unique. In fact, there are a considerable number of permutations. Harry is ultimately given an 11 inch wand made of holly with a phoenix feather core, but what's important to note here is that he's not just given it, the wand chose him. In fact, that's how wands work, at least at Ollivander's, and part of the close bond shared by witch wizard and wand can be attributed to this. Wizards and wands share an almost symbiotic relationship, and that's why some wands simply won't work for certain people. But before finally landing on the one that would choose him, Harry tried many others. Harry tried, and tried. He had no idea what Mr. Ollivander was waiting for. The pile of tried wands was mounting higher and higher on the spindly chair, but the more wands Mr. Ollivander pulled from the shelves, the happier he seemed to become. Tricky customer, eh? Not to worry. We'll find the perfect match here somewhere. I wonder. Now, yes. Why not? Unusual combination. Holly and Phoenix Feather. Eleven inches. Nice and supple. Harry took the wand. He felt a sudden warmth in his fingers. He raised the wand above his head, brought it swishing down through the dusty air, and a stream of red and gold sparks shot from the end like a firework, throwing dancing spots of light onto the walls. Hagrid whooped and clapped, and Mr. Ollivander cried, Oh, bravo! Yes, indeed. Oh, very good. Well, well, well. How curious. How very curious. And what's so curious about this situation is that the brother core of Harry's wand existed inside the wand of another character you might know, Lord Voldemort. He put Harry's wand back into his box and wrapped it in brown paper, still muttering, Curious. Curious. Sorry, said Harry, but what's curious? Mr. Ollivander fixed Harry with his pale stare. I remember every wand I've ever sold, Mr. Potter. Every single wand. It so happens that the phoenix whose tail feather is in your wand gave another feather. Just one other. It is very curious indeed that you should be destined for this wand when its brother, why, its brother gave you that scar. Harry swallowed. Yes, thirteen and a half inches. You. Curious indeed how these things happen. The wand chooses the wizard, remember? I think we must expect great things from you, Mr. Potter. After all, he who must not be named did great things. Terrible, yes, but great. So, how is it that Voldemort and Harry ended up with the same wand core? What are the chances that these two wizards, whose fates would intertwine, ended up with phoenix feathers from the same phoenix? We know later in the story that Harry and Voldemort sharing a wand core inevitably ends up being an important plot point. This is because of the effect produced when the two wands are pitted against each other in combat. They will not work properly against each other, said Dumbledore. If, however, the owners of the wands force the wands to do battle, a very rare effect will take place. One of the wands will force the other to regurgitate the spells it has performed in reverse the most recent first, and then those that preceded it. So, it was always important from a plot perspective that the two share a wand core, but why is it relevant otherwise? And provided that Harry and Voldemort are so very different, how is it that they could end up with brother cores? 
According to Pottermore, the following can be said of Phoenix Feather Cores. Phoenix Feathers are capable of the greatest range of magic, though they may take longer than either Unicorn or Dragon Cores to reveal this. They show the most initiative, sometimes acting of their own accord, a quality that many witches and wizards dislike. Phoenix Feather Ones are always the pickiest when it comes to potential owners, for the creature from which they are taken is one of the most independent and detached in the world. If Phoenix Feather Cores are the pickiest when it comes to potential owners, what commonalities do Harry and Voldemort possess that could entice a selection by the wand? We learn to love Forks over the course of the Harry Potter story and there's no chance that his feather could possibly choose Voldemort, right? Well, here's where it gets tricky. I think the simple answer is that if Voldemort were to visit Ollivanders as well Voldemort and not Tom Riddle, then he would have never been selected by a phoenix feather. But the truth is that when Tom Riddle visited Ollivanders as a young boy, he was not yet entirely corrupted. His path was still, albeit inevitably rocky, unclear, and this meant that there was hope for this young boy. Furthermore, Tom Riddle possessed an incredible amount of magical ability, which was no doubt alluring for the powerful Phoenix Feather Core. The Core sensed power, and it knew that with this wizard, it would be able to do great things. It knew that this great power had a massive amount of potential to do good. Things just didn't end up working out that way. Furthermore, provided that phoenixes are symbols of death and rebirth, it makes sense that it would select someone like Voldemort, a man obsessed with avoiding death. Similar to the way the phoenix is reborn from its own ashes, Voldemort anchored his own life through placing his soul into objects, horcruxes, which tied him to the mortal plane and allowed him to be reborn. Voldemort simply perverted the meaning of what transcendence really is, allowing lust for power to get the better of him. As for Harry, well, I don't think you can deny that he was destined for greatness. You also certainly can't avoid the similarities that Harry and Voldemort shared in early life, either. Both orphans of mixed heritage with a troubled start in life, even sharing a slight physical resemblance, they were just looking for their place in the world. But for just a second, let me introduce you to a more twisted perspective. The only reason that Fawkes Feather chose Harry was because of his connection to Voldemort. The night that Voldemort killed Harry's parents, a piece of Voldemort's soul latched itself onto Harry, cementing the connection between them. But what I want to suggest here is that the core in the wand that chose Harry only picked him because it was drawn to the parasitic part of Voldemort inside of Harry and not Harry himself. And the darker part of what this theory would suggest is that Harry wasn't truly destined for greatness. In an interesting turn of events, the only reason that THE Harry Potter was great, the only reason that he was a person of interest in any way was because of Tom Riddle. What do you think? Was Harry destined to be chosen by the fabled Phoenix Feather or was it purely because of his connection to Voldemort? Let me know down in the comments section below. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.